Hello! Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. For tonight's live lesson, we are going to discuss another worthwhile lesson, which is very useful to everyone, most especially sa mga mag-aaral, sa mga professionals, at sa mga gustong matutong mag-English. <clears throat> and let's wait for more live audience for tonight. Hintayin lang muna natin. At habang naghihintay tayo, I would like to request all of you to greet on our live chat box. Yes, pakilagay po ang inyong mga lugar na kinaroroonan. And of course, para po makita ng mga kasama nating live community of learners tonight with us. Sige, shout out muna natin yung mga kasama natin. Unahin natin, ayan, si Jeron. Hello, Jano. Aquino. Jick. Good evening. Also, pakilagay nyo rin kung mulang sa ang lugar kayo na nonood. We also have with us one of our channel members, G. Urbano Special. So, kapag may nakita kayo nag-comment na may ganyang mga symbols, ibig sabihin, group members sila ng channel. Nag-join sila sa exclusive membership. Of course, my husband, Yen. Jeromy, hello, good evening. Dan TV, hello, good evening. Danski, Hazel Ann, Lloyd Kihano, ayan, one of our very loyal learners in this channel. Ang aking kuya na nasa Mindanao, ayan, shout out natin. Ayan, maayong gabi. Ayan, dyan po sa inyo sa Bacolod, Kuya Maki. Melanie, from Dubai. Ayan, may nanonood na sa atin wala sa ibang bansa. From Doha, Qatar. Darius Tumale. El, hello, hello. Ezekiel, good evening. From Paco, Manila. Shout out natin si Ronnie Office Vlog. Fritz TV, hello. One of our channel members then. Jejara, Kaliste, at syempre may nanonood sa atin from Turkey, si Teacher Janet ng YouTube channel ng English Era. Kung hindi pa kayo nakapag-subscribe sa channel niya, you should go on her channel, check out her videos. Napakarami yung matututuhan. Follow her on her social media accounts, on her YouTube, English Era, on her uh, Facebook, on her TikTok, on her Instagram. Ayan, syempre si Janina kasama rin natin, another channel member. Danilo Dagaas from Sorsogon, Bicol. Hello po, magandang gabi. And kung ang pinapanood ni na ninyo ay replay na ng video na ito, hindi nyo naabutan yung live, pwede na kayong mag-proceed after 5 minutes para doon na kayo mismo makinig sa ating lesson. Hello, Hitch. Siyempre may nanonood din sa atin from Iligan. Hello po, magandang gabi, Mac Perry. Shoutout din uli natin si Ezekiel. Eto pa, si... Ayan, from India, Matthew Rahaman. Hello, good evening. Wow, we have an audience, a learner from India tonight. Hello po, grade 2. Ayan, no? sana may matutuhan kayo from tonight's live. Ruben Gorospe from Los Angeles, California. I know it's still morning there sa California. Ayan, syempre sa mama ko. Ayan, <laughs> hello po ma. Josephine Bermudez na nasa Mikaw, ayan. Ang dami nang nanonood sa atin. From Osaka, Japan, Eileen. Ayan, Teacher Noel Echano. Hello po. Shoutout din natin si Abdusalam Birdloves. Ayan, napakarami na nga. Si Johnny. Hello po. Shoutout natin ang sister niya na si Jif Ranaif Junet Marco. Hello po, Yolanda Trenado. From Cavite, hello po. Jajara. Albert Cortez. Shout out na natin si J.R. Suwapan. Okay, so may nagtatanong ano ba ang topic natin? Ayan, so maya-maya mag-start na po tayo. Ang um, batin ko lang si Lloyd Tijano. Yes, second anniversary subscriber ko kasi second year ko na nung July. Dalawang taon na tayo. So konti na lang mag million subscribers na tayo, no? Sana po matulungan niyo ako na sana maabot natin siya within this year. Yung goal natin na yon. Ayan, shout out uli natin ang ating ESL teacher na si Teacher Noel. Syempre may nanonood din sa atin from Baguio si Zosima. 
At sa lahat po, muli good evening to all of you. If you are watching the replay of this video, pwede na kayong mag-proceed sa 6 minutes para dumiratsya na agad sa topic. So let's jump right into the topic. Our topic for tonight, my dear learners, is about the 10 grammatical errors and how we can fix them. So as you could see, I uh, put there part one only because it's a very uh, crucial topic. It's crucial kasi marami siyang parte. Kaya minabuti ko na gawin siyang part-part. So sa part na to, meron lang akong tatalakayin na at least uh, three to four na common grammatical errors at kung paano sila if you fix or aayusin. So before I begin, I would like to greet all of you, my dear learners. A good, good evening and welcome back again to my channel. I am Teacher Aubrey, Teacher Aubrey Bermudez, your English teacher. And my mission in this channel is to help everyone who is interested to improve their English speaking, writing, and communication skills. Kaya naman kung nanonood kayo ngayon at hindi pa kayo member ng ating uh, YouTube online community of learners, I'm inviting you to simply click the subscribe button below. Yes, ikiklik niyo na po yung subscribe button sa iba ba? And based on my analytics, um, medyo marami-rami sa ating mga subscribers ang hindi pa naka-turn on ng notification. Pakiklik niyo rin po yung notification bell and then click all para every time na may live, na mayroon po nga bagong lesson sa ating channel, ay makikita niyo agad. Unang-una kayong manunotify. And also, um, if you will find this live lesson tonight useful, please don't forget to click the like button. So, yun lang naman yung mga simple favor ko. So, what are we waiting for? Let's begin. Our topic for tonight is about the 10 grammatical errors and how to fix them. Why is it important, Teacher Aubrey, to study that topic? Why is it important to take a look at that topic? Well, when we are writing, we are very Overwhelmed. Yes, I'm going to use the term overwhelmed. Na-overwhelm tayo sa dami ng grammar rules na sa halip na tuloy-tuloy yung pagsulat natin, yung flow ng idea, na humihinto tayo kasi, ay, tama ba to? Is the subject agreeing with the verb? Or is my pronoun agreeing with the antecedent as well as the punctuation marks? Tama ba tong ginagawa ko? Well, yun yung usual dilemma ng mga estudyante na hindi nila matuloy-tuloy ma-express yung sarili nila kasi nga na-overwhelm sila sa dami ng dapat nilang alalahanin na rules. Pero, hindi naman imposible na maging spontaneous yung pagpapahayag natin, ang is kaisipan natin when it comes to writing or even when we are speaking. Basta alam natin yung basic rules <clears throat> that we should apply when we are writing. Yung mga rules na tatalakayin ko ngayon, my dear learners, they are more useful when it comes to writing. Kasi may iba rito na, just like the punctuation, na matatalakay natin mamaya. Let's have the first part for the 10 grammatical errors and how we can fix them. The first error, common error, in grammar is the agreement errors. So from the word itself, agreement, yung pagkakasundo. Diba? When we say agreement, there should be two parties that agree with each other. So most commonly, we are familiar here when it comes to the subject and verb. But aside from that, meron pang other parts of speech na kailangan ay nag agree sa isa't isa. When we say agreement errors, we will talk about the subject and verb in a sentence. They should agree in number. If the subject is singular, alam naman natin kailangan yung verb natin ay singular Then, If the subject is plural, yung verb natin ay plural Then, And aside from that, we have to uh, consider also the person of the subject. If it's in first person, second person, or third person. Okay? First person, the one speaking. Second person, the one you are talking to. Third person, the one being talked about o yung pinag-uusapan. Aside from that, when we talk about agreement errors, we will also cover the pronouns. Pronouns in Filipino, sila yung panghalip, humahalili sa pangalan, sa pangungusap. Ang pangit naman kapag tayo ay magsasalita o susulat, ang subject natin ay si Rodora. And the entire sentences in the whole paragraph, we keep on... Repeating her name, Rodora, Rodora, Rodora in each sentence. So we will find a word that will replace Rodora. 
so that our writing will sound better. We can use the pronoun she, di ba? Because Rodora is a girl. We have to use the pronoun she so that will agree with the gender and the number of the antecedent. Antecedent, yun yung pinapalitan ni pronoun. Mamaya, mas malalaman ninyo. So let's have the first part. Um, subjects and verbs must agree. I have a lot of videos already about the subject and verb agreement. You can check them here on my YouTube channel. Uh, that's the very basic English rule, grammar rule, na kapag ang subject mo ay isa lang, yung verb mo ay isa lang din. Kapag naman yung subject mo ay marami or plural, your verb must be plural. So there are different forms that we have to follow para maging para mag-agree yung subject natin at verb. Tingnan ninyo, sa gagawin nating lesson tonight, I want it to become more interactive, my dear learners. So, what are we going to do? I will present you sentences with errors. Yes. Parang finding the error. Ang gagawin nating pag-aaral tonight, to make it more interactive, you can use the live chat box, the comment section there, to put your answers, to put your thoughts and ideas, and then I'll be... Uh, very glad to read them and to flash them on the screen para makita ng ating live audience tonight. So the first sentence I'll be uh, presenting is this. Actually, I already put the cross and the check mark there para malaman ninyo kung mali ba yung pinresent ko para hanapin ninyo yung mali. The first one is this. You can read after me, even if you're just watching virtually. Pwede niyong basahin so that you can improve your speaking. You're speaking skills in English. You can read the sentence. The books in the box is for sale. The books in the box is for sale. So what's our subject there? You can put your comment in the live chat box. Well, obviously, the subject there is... Come on. Put your answers in the live chat box. Mm -hmm. What's our subject there? The books in the box is for sale. Something is wrong there. Yeah. I saw a comment already. So, ang maliro natin, according to me, is the linking verb are. Okay? Are. Well, yan yung nawawala. Ang subject po natin, sabi ni Dangsky, is the books. Yes, yan po ang subject natin, yung books. Ano po? The books. So, when we say books, that's already plural. But then, what we use is the linking verb is. Obviously, the linking verb is is wrong. What we should use there instead is the linking verb are because the subject is plural to make it agree with the subject books. So, it will be like this. The correct form should be the books in the box are for sale. So, in that way, naging tama yung sentence natin. Nag-agree na yung verb natin sa subject na books. The books in the box are for sale. Alright? So, let's take note of this. Sabi rito, let's take note that the subject in the sentence is books. Kapag sinabing book, isa lang yun. We can use uh, the linking verb is. Take note of that. We have different verbs in English. We have linking verbs, helping verbs. And we have to take note kung kailan gagamitin yung isang linking verb kasi... Diba? Ang verb may plurality yan. Meron siyang singular, gagamitin ay is. Pero kung plural, are in present. Pero kung nasa past na, was for singular, were for present. Uh, wa was for present, was for singular na past, and then were for plural na past. Okay? And a lot more. We also have has, have, such things. And books, ayan na nga. Books is plural and the verb in the sentences is to be. So, yung verb natin doon is yung is nga. Ngayon, dito tayo. Another wrong sentence. Please find the error and put in the comment in the live chat box. It is a combination of factors that cause the present situation. It is a combination of factors that cause the present situation. What do you think is... The error in that sentence. Let's try to find the subject and the verb. Well, the subject in this sentence is the combination. We're not talking about the factors, but the combination of factors. Combination. So that is singular. Okay? But then, when we will find the verb there, the verb there is cause. Cause is plural. Bakit po? In the English grammar, 
Usually, sa mga action verbs, kapag walang S ang isang verb, for example, dogs eat. Dogs is plural. It is plural. Kapag may S, usually yung subject or plural, marami. Yung verb natin, nasa base form lang. We call a verb in its base form kapag wala tayong idinagdag na kahit ano. Just like in that simple sentence, dogs eat. It's wrong to say dogs eats. Why? Because dogs is already plural. It's wrong to add an S into our verb because that's the rule. That's just the rule in English. But if we change that sentence into dog eats, dog is singular, we have to add an S into our verb to make it agree with each other. It will be dog eats. The dog is singular. The verb eats is singular because we already added an S into it. So that's it. Just like in this sentence, it is a combination of factors that cause the present situation. So our verb there is cause. That is plural, but the subject is singular. So how can we make our verb agree with its subject combination of factors? Don't get confused, okay? Because sometimes you see phrases. You see sub phrases as subject. So the subject there is combination of factors. But we're just talking about, we're just talk talking only about the combination, not about the factors. Ang tinutukoy natin, yung kombinasyon ng mga factors na yun. Pero hindi tayo tumutukoy dun sa factors lang. Okay? So combination of factors is singular. We have to make cause singular. We have to add an S. It will be like this to make it correct. It is a combination of factors that causes the present situation. So yung cause, dinagdagan ng S, naging causes to make it correct. So you see, um, tricky minsan yung pagsulat ng sentences kasi may mga phrases tayo no, sa English. Pero kailangan lang hanapin mo yung mismong subject at yung mismong verb at kailangan mag-agree sila sa isa't isa. Okay? So let's take note of this. If your subject is the pronoun I, ako, you, ikaw, they, sila, we, and these, okay? <clears throat> we will use the plural verb. Kaya kung ang verb mo ay cause, hindi mo lalagyan ng S, okay? So it, maybe you will be asking, Teacher Aubrey, the subject is I and you, that's only one, di ba? Isa lang naman ang, isa ka lang, I, ako. You, isa lang din. But in the English grammar, that belong, those two pronouns, I and you, belong to the exception to the rule kung saan laging ginagamit sa kanila ay plural verb. Okay? And another thing, if your subject, yung pinag-uusapan ay he, she, it, and this, okay, that they are all singular, isa lang sila. So yung verb natin, kung ang verb natin ay cause, kailangan singular din, dadagdagan ng S, it will be causes. He causes she causes, it causes, this causes, okay? And also, there are a lot of tricky things about the English grammar in the different parts of speech, just like in, pro, in uh, nouns. We have this so-called um, mass and un uncountable nouns, okay? And yung mga halimbawa, we have software, it has... A connection with technology, software, the uh, also data, information, equipment, machinery, knowledge, space, oxygen, steel, water, environment, and technology. Lahat sila wala silang plural forms. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng sabihin nga uh, waters. Gumagamit tayo ng mga quantifier. Pwede natin sabihin uh, glass of water, two glasses of water, but we cannot say Waters. Walang ganun. Gumagamit tayo ng container ng quantifiers para mabilang sila. Okay? Pero sila mismo sarili nila, hindi natin sila mabibilang. Kaya tinawag sila nga mass or uncountable nouns. Wala silang plural form, my dear learners. Kaya naman, even yung word na informations, kapag gusto mong tumukoy sa maraming informasyon, it's wrong to say informations. There's no such thing or there's no such word na nag -e exist na ganyan, informations. Okay? Next thing, dito tayo. Let's have a short activity about subject-verb agreement. I'll give you the, the sentence and then I'll give you a few minutes to uh, analyze the sentence and try to find the correct verb to complete each sentence. We have only five here. 
The first one is this. You can read after me, even if you're just watching virtually. The first one is, of all the countries in that area of the world, perhaps Nigeria, mm, 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 the most potential. So let's take a look. What is our subject in that sentence? Well, obviously, we're talking about Nigeria. Nigeria is a country somewhere in Africa and continent. Nigeria. So Nigeria is singular. Let's take a look at the choices here. We have have and has. Well, I have a video already about that, about those verbs, have, has, and had. San ginagamit ang have and has? So if our subject is Nigeria, well, that's singular. <clears throat> What's our correct answer? Let's see who already got the correct answer here. All right. I already saw. Good answer. I saw one here from me. Bo. She said has. Well, that's very good. Excellent answer. It will be of all the countries in that area of the world, perhaps Nigeria has the most potential. Nigeria is singular. We have to use the verb has. All right. Next one, number two is this. Houses built in rural areas. Well, that's a new vocabulary. When we say rural areas, we are pertaining to provinces. Tumutukoy tayo sa mga probinsya. Okay? Take note of that. Rural means province. Probinsya. All right? Less than blank, less than those in the urban areas. Urban areas, ayan nga, yung mga syudad, Manila. Basta tumutukoy sa city, that is urban. Okay? Again, houses built in rural areas, mm, less than those in the urban areas. So, what is our subject? Hanapin natin, sino yung pinag-uusapan? The subject here is houses. Houses. Okay? Houses, obviously, is plural or marami. So, what is the verb? Is it cost or cost? Sabi ko sa inyo, kapag ang subject ay marami, Yung verb natin should be in the base form. Wala tayong idadagdag na kahit ano. So the correct answer there is... Yes! From Hazel Badaguas, the correct answer is cost. So it should be houses built in rural areas cost less than those in the urban areas. Oh, good job! Nakakasunod kayo, ano? The third one is, as most sport magazines can attest. Mm-hmm. Playing sports such as tennis and basketball, mm, not only mental ability but also physical strength. So, stop tayo saglit dito. Ito yung nagpapalito sa mga nag-aaral, no? Kasi sabi nila, sobrang haba, nakakalito, nasan ba dyan yung subject? Kapag nakakita kayo ng ganyang kahabang subject, hihinga lang kayo saglit. Ano, titignan nyo muna. You have to analyze it. Titignan nyo, ano ba yung mga part dyan na Buo pa rin yung meaning ng sentence kahit aalisin yun, no? Meron kasi diyang mga modifiers na phrases na siya mahahaba. Pero kahit alisin natin, ah, buo pa rin yung kahulugan ng pangungusap at ang matitira lang yung subject. Doon mo makikita na yun pala yung subject. So in that sentence, as most sports magazine can attest, ano? Playing sports. Ano yung pinag-uusapan natin diyan? Playing sports, yung paglalaro ng mga sport. Sports katulad ng tennis at ng basketball. So yun yung pinag-uusapan. Hindi natin pinag-uusapan dyan yung sports na tennis at basketball, my dear learners. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dyan ay yung paglalaro mismo. Okay? So playing is an example of gerund in English. Soon tatalakayin natin yan. Yun po yung mga akala nating verb sila. Akala natin verb yung form nila kasi may ing, but they are functioning as noun in a sentence. ba Kapag sinabi natin playing sport, paglalaro ng sports, tumutukoy tayo dun sa paglalaro, sa act of playing. But we're not talking about the action here. So the subject here in this sentence is playing sports. We're just only pertaining to a singular subject, with, which is playing sports. But we're not talking about here, we're not talking about the sports tennis and basketball. Because if we're talking about the sports tennis and basketball, that will already be plural. The subject will already be plural kasi tumutukoy na tayo sa sports na tennis and basketball. But 
not. We are talking about the act of playing the sports. The act. So that's only singular. What we have, what verb should we use here? Let's choose from require or requires. Since the subject is singular, playing sports, the verb must also be singular. As I told you, to make our subject, uh, to make our verb singular, we have to add an S. So it's wrong to say playing sports requires. That's, or it's wrong to say playing sports require. And from my previous videos before, as I'm always telling you, if the sentence, if you're writing, sounds a little awkward, it's, uh, it has a higher chance na may mali doon sa sentence mo. Ako ganun kasi ako, ganun ako natuto magmula bata ako eh. Natuto ako na kapag ang pangit paking ganito, feeling ko may mali dito. Hahanapin ko yun. Ganun kasi ako, ganun ako lumaki nung nag-aaral ako ng English, ng grammar, ng language. Kapag pangit pakinggan, sabi ko may mali dito eh. Kailangan pag-isipan ko, baguhin ko. So the correct answer that in that sentence is, Playing sports such as tennis and basketball requires. Okay, tingnan natin kung sino nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Aha. Uh -huh. Ang unang nakakuha si Kathleen. Ayan, very good. Excellent, Kathleen Lazaro requires. That's the correct answer. Let's proceed to the fourth one. We have common knowledge to anyone who studies science. Ayan ha. Common knowledge to anyone who studies science. Yung karaniwang kaalaman daw sa mga nag-aaral ng siyensya. Ayun ha, ano yung tinutukoy? The earth, blank on its own axis once every 24 hours. What's our subject in that sentence? Well, obviously, ang pinag-uusapan natin dyan na nagre-revolve daw sa sarili niyang axis every 24 hours. Ano po, yung planeta natin? We are talking about earth. And earth is singular. Isa lang ang earth? Well, knowing that the subject is singular, what? Verb should we use? Is it revolve, which is plural, or revolves with an S, which is singular? Well, we have to use revolves. Let's take a look at your answers. The first one who got the correct answer is Faith Manalo. Hello, Faith. Very good answer. So it will be a common knowledge to anyone who studies science. The earth revolves on its own axis once every 24 hours. Hmm, that's it. Next is this. The last sentence you have to answer in this part for the subject and verb agreement. <clears throat> of all the grammar points I have studied in my seven years of English, the most recent unit, the most recent unit, ano yung pinag-uusapan talaga dyan? Yung lahat ba nung grammar points? Sabi kasi sa unahan eh, of all the grammar points I have studied in my seven years of English, ang pinag-uusapan ba lahat ng grammar points na napag-aralan niya sa loob ng pitong taon na pag-aaral niya ng English? Hindi po. That's just additional modifier. Tumutukoy ka lang dun sa kabuuan. Pero may tinutukoy ka talagang pinag-uusapan sa pangungusap. Ano po yun? The most recent unit. And that is singular. That's only one. So, to make that singular subject the most recent unit agree with your verb, your verb should be in singular form too. And to make a verb into its singular form, we have to add an S. The verbs there that we have to choose from, we have confuse and confuses. Well, that's another vocabulary. Kapag nalilito ka, you are confused. When we say confuse, you are uh, thinking twice about things. Nalilito ka, pinag-iisipan mo, naguguluhan ka. Okay? So, the answer in this sentence will be the most recent unit. It, is it confuse or confuses? The answer is, the first one who got the correct answer is, Aha, uh -huh, Lloyd Quijano. So the answer is confuses. You see, no? Kailangan lang ina-analyze natin yung sentence para alam natin kung paano pag kakasunduin yung subject sa verb. It will be of all the grammar points I have studied in my seven years of English, the most recent unit confuses me the most for a variety of reasons. Uunawain mo lang, ano ba talaga yung pinag-uusapan dito? At kapag mahaba yung pangusap, may mga part, may mga clauses tayo, may mga sugnay na pwede namang alisin at kaya pa rin makapag-isa nung natira lang. Kasi sila lang talaga yung bumuo nung thought sa isang pangungusap. So, so much for that. Congratulations, my dear learners. Let's give ourselves, let's give yourself, yourselves a virtual claps for uh, answering correctly our uh, set of activities about the subject and verb. Now, let's proceed to the second 
agreement, common agreement errors. Let's talk about the pronouns. Yes, pronouns. My dear learners, I already have a video about pronouns in which I discuss the different kinds of pronouns as well as their examples and in, in which I use them in a variety of sentences para mas maunawaan niyo. When we say pronouns, it's a part of speech in which it's essential. Why? Because without pronouns, writing or speaking will be very boring. Yeah. Napaka-boring ng pagsusulat, ng pagsasalita, kung wala tayong pronouns. Or in Filipino, we call them as panghalip. Okay? Panghalip. Kaya panghalip kasi humahalili sila sa mismong pinag-uusapan sa pangungusap kapag paulit-ulit ng ginagamit. Pwede nating palitan. Just like in the example I gave a while ago, I said Rodora. If in the first sentence of your paragraph, you use the subject Rodora, and in each sentence, you will we will be talking about Rodora, and we keep on saying Rodora, well, that's quite boring. What we have to do is to find a pronoun that will suit best to our antecedent. When we say antecedent, diba, we have this topic in the grammar na pro, pronoun antecedent agreement. Yung pronoun, yun yung pumapalit. So, ang papalit kay Rodora ay she. Kasi si Rodora ay isang babae. She is our pronoun. By the way, it's not pronounced as pronoun. All this time kasi akala ko rin pronoun. But then, uh, I'll check the dictionary. I listen to other uh, native speakers teaching uh, English. It's not pronoun. Akala ko rin all this time pronoun. Eh. Pero it's pronoun. The O there is long. Pronoun. Okay? You should stop saying and pronouncing that word as pronoun. It's pronoun. All right? So, yung pronoun natin is yung she. She in Filipino is siya. Well, that's the difference in balari lang Filipino or Filipino grammar in English grammar. In Filipino kasi, yung siya pwede nang tumukoy sa lalaki at sa babae. But in English grammar, we have the division of gender. We have gender for male and female. He for male, she for female. So we use she as pronoun. Yung ngayon, yung pinalitan natin, si Rodora, ang tawag sa kanya, siya yung pinalitan ng pronoun na she. Si Rodora, ang tawag natin sa kanya ay antecedent. I think na pag-aralan nyo na yan, ano, we have antecedent. Rodora is the antecedent. Okay? So ngayon, kailangan daw, yung ating pronoun, yung ipinalit natin sa ating antecedent, mag-agree doon sa mismong pinalitan. Hindi ka... We cannot use he as pronoun for Rodora because Rodora is a female. We cannot use a pronoun that refers to a male gender. Kailangan mag-agree yan. Even when it comes to number, we cannot say Rodora is my student. And then in the next sentence, we cannot say they love reading books. We cannot use they because they is sila, marami. E yung pinag-uusapan natin, bukod sa isa lang, babae pa. Because when we use the pronoun they, we are talking about many people, two or more. And we are not specifying the gender. So let's take a look at this rule. Tingnan natin, no? Alam nyo, very exciting. It's really exciting to study grammar. Nung nag-aaral ako kasi gusto ko siya pinag-aaralan. I'm not good in math. Pero feeling ko kapag binubusisi yung grammar, feeling ko math kasi siya. Para sa isip ko. No? <laughs> Siguro ganun, ganun yung iba ng mga hindi mahilig sa math. Pero kasi sa grammar, may mga binubusisi rin tayo. May mga sinusolve din tayo. Parang math din nga siya. Pero it's more on language. This one, another sentence with an error. Each student collected their library card. Nako! Ang sakit sa tenga. Kahit natutulog ako pag narinig ko ito, magigising ako. May mali. No? Each student collected their library card. So we're talking about each student. Well, obviously, each student is singular. Tumutukoy ka lang sa bawat isang mag-aaral. Well, if that's the case, that's singular. Okay? Collected their library card. What's the pronoun there? Ang pronoun na ginamit natin, napapalit dapat sa each student, ay there. Well, that's wrong. Can you try to uh, compose your own sentence to make this wrong sentence correct? Sige nga po, ilagay natin sa ating live chat box and let's make this live lesson tonight more interactive. Ayan. Dami na. Okay. 
I'm going to find find the correct answer. <laughs> uh -huh. Sige nga, ilagay sa ating live chat box the correct sentence or the correct pronoun to be used instead of there. There here is obviously wrong. All right, I already see an answer. Mm -hmm. Malapit-lapit na. Malapit-lapit na. Come on, try. Try to compose another sentence. Each student. So when we say each student, we're not sure if it is a girl or a boy student, if it's a male or a female student. So we can use either a pronoun that refers to a male or to a female gender. Ah, I already saw. An excellent answer from, let's flash it on screen. Oh, sorry. Um, from Adenair Haji Kosain. Sabi niya, each student collected, since we are not sure about the gender of the student we are pertaining, it's wrong to say there because each student is singular. We have to find a pronoun that is singular in number. It can be his or her. Okay, we're talking about the possession of each student. Ano yung pinapakita na pag-aari nila? Yung library card. Each student collected his or her. It's correct to use his, pwede rin namang her. Bakit? Kasi we are not sure about the gender of our subject or of our antecedent. Ang tawag na natin ha, para mas ma-familiarize kayo, hindi na natin tatawagin subject. Ang tatawagin na natin sa pinapalitan ng pronoun, we will call it already as antecedent because that's the term for it. Each student, which is our antecedent in the sentence, replaced by the pronoun his or her is singular. And we're not sure about the gender of it. That's why we used either his or her to make it correct. Alin man sa dalawa, pwede po. Very good, si Adenair. Ayan, tama na yung mga sagot. Naladangski. Oh, sorry. Okay. Precious. Very good, no? So, wag kayong makontento lang sa nanonood lang ako. I'll just watch and listen. Try to uh, compose your own sentences, applying the rules we are talking about in tonight's live lesson. And of course, if you're learning something worthwhile tonight, ipaalam natin sa lahat that this lesson is worthwhile. What you have to do is to like this video. <laughs> Next one is this. Eto pa. Another way para maging tama yung sentence natin kanina, ito yung maling sentence, no? Each student collected their library card. Mali yung there dyan. Yung isang paraan para maging tama pa siya ay ito. Pwede nating palitan yung each student para manatiling tama yung pronoun natin na there. So, para mag-agree yung pronoun na there sa antecedent, papalitan naman natin yung antecedent para maging tama na lang yung pronoun natin na there. So, there is plural. To make each student plural, to consider it as correct antecedent for the pronoun there, we have to change it into plural. So, it will be all students. Tumutukoy ka na sa lahat ng mag-aaral. So, in that way, the... Pronoun there is already correct because that already agrees with the antecedent all students. Did you get it? So, ganun lang siya kasimple. Kailangan nag agree yung pronoun dun sa pinalitan niya. Titingnan nyo kung ano yung kasarian. Kung marami ba. Ano po? You have to consider that. Okay, aside from that, dito tayo in the third part. Pronouns must agree with each other. Kapag po sumusulat tayo sa pangungusap, kailangan minsan din yung pronouns natin na ginamit. Sa unahan, gumamit ka na ng there kasi tumutukoy ka dun sa subject, sa naging antecedent, yung pinalitan na all students, marami. Sa, pa, sa sunod ng pangungusap, sa paragraph mo, binago mo yung pronoun mo. Gumamit ka na ng his. Eh, yung subject mo pa rin, yung antecedent pa rin, yung papalitan pa rin ay all students. Bakit ka gumamit ng his? So, hindi na nag-agree yung pronoun mo in your first sentence dun sa mga preceding sentences pa. Ano po? Kailangan mag-agree yung mga pronouns na ginamit mo or gagamitin mo sa pangungusap. Let's take a look at this sentence. It has an error. Once one has read the article, 
you have to answer the question. So, we will consider the person in the sentence. We have first person. If you are the one speaking, that is I or me. Okay? We have you. You is second person. Or when we say second person in the English grammar, we pertain to the one we're talking to. Yung kausap natin. You. Ikaw. Kayo. Ikaw. <laughs> And we have this third person if we are talking about the one being talked about o kapag tumutukoy tayo sa pinag-uusapan lang. I, ako yung nagsasalita, first person. You, kausap kita. Kausap ko kayo, second person. Third person, may pinag-uusapan tayo. Tingnan natin itong pangungusap natin. Once one has read the article, you have to answer the questions. Well, ang sagwa pakinggan, sakit sa tenga. Sakit sa tenga, no? Masakit siya sa tenga ko kasi mali siya. So, let's try to make that correct. Anong mali dyan? Subukan nga nating alamin. Ang ating pong pronoun dyan ay yung word na one. Once, one. Tapos, in the next clause, the one that, ca that comes after the comma, di ba? Once, one has read the article, may tinutukoy ka. Matapos na ang isa ay basahin yung article, yung kasulatan, yung sulat, or yung babasahin, you have to answer the question. Bakit biglang naging you? Bakit biglang kinausap mo? Ba't bigla kang nakipag-usap? When in fact, in the first place, ang pinag-uusapan, yung isa na yon, Yung isang tao na yon. Tumutukoy ka sa isang tao. When once, once one has read the article, ano po? You're talking about that one person. Tapos pagdating sa second clause mo that will complete your sentence, naging you na. So anong dapat gawin natin para maging tama yung sentence? Let's try to uh, make our own sentence to make it correct. Sabi ni Lawrence, no. Mm -hmm. Sabi ni Hazel, once one has read the article. Hmm? No? <laughs> nice try, but it's not. Okay, may nakita akong tamang sagot. Sabi ni Faith Manalo, we have to change the pronoun you in the second clause into one to make it correct. So it will be, I'll reveal the answer, my dear learners. It will be once one has read the article, one has to answer the question. To so make it correct, kailangan pareho po yung gagamitin mo lang na pronoun. Kasi tumutukoy ka lang din naman sa parehong antecedent or sa parehong pinag-uusapan. Kaya hindi pwedeng from third person, may pinag-uusapan, tapos biglang nakipag-usap ka. ba Even when we are writing. When we are writing, eto yung isa sa mga dapat i-consider ng mga learners, especially ng mga high school or college students. I had this subject called creative writing nung college kami, BSE English. Ang saya ng subject na yon kasi, syempre, creative writing, we just kept on writing that time. Lahat ng topics, all topics under the sun, natut kaya na mas nahasa kaming sumulat. From your very beginning, from the very beginning, from the introduction, kailangan yung subject mo, yung pronoun mo na gagamitin kung gumamit ka sa umpisa pa lang. Yung point of view ng pagsulat mo ay nasa first person, ikaw mismo yung nagsasalita. You have to, you will, let's say, Ikikwento mo yung buhay mo. I was born in, I was like this, and then suddenly magsishift ka into third person. Aubrey Bermudez, that's wrong. If you started as you are the speaker in your write-up, then hanggang sa huli, ganun po. Maliban na lang kung gagamit ka ng mga sentences na quoted line or yung um, reported speech or tama, quoted lines yung binanggit mismo nung magsalita dun ka lang makakapag-inject nung ginamita ng second person or third person pero yung kabuang point of view point of view po ang tawag dun no, sa pagsulat kung nasa first person ka, manatili ka sa first person that's it okay, so I hope you find all those things useful ayan, tama eto pa ha Tama rin to, sabi ni Oki. <laughs> sabi niya, you are the one. You are the one has read the article. Wait, 
Medyo magulo ha. Ayusin natin. You have to read the article. Pwede ganon. You have to read. You have to read the article. It's wrong to say has when your subject is have. Okay? It's wrong to say has if your subject is have. If your subject is you, kailangan po have. Okay? So it will be you have to read the article, then you have to answer it. Something like that. Hindi ka na pwedeng gumamit ng one kung you ang ginamit mo. So, still, I appreciate your effort. Okay lang yan, magkamali, no? <clears throat> okay lang yan. Kasi, paano ka matututo kung hindi nyo susubukan? So, that's the first part of our common grammar errors, my dear learners. Ngayon, mag-proceed na tayo sa second one. We have this comma splices. Ayan, comma. It's not comma, ha? It's comma. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to invite all of you, my dear learners. Weekly, I'm going to have live. I'm thinking if it will be fixed every Thursday. So, sisikapin ko every Thursday makapag-live ako. I promise you that. So, every 8.30 ng Thursday, babalik kayo sa channel natin, dito sa channel ko, para magkaroon tayo ng interactive learning. So, it's comma. Yung comma, yung po yung kuwit na ginagamit natin sa sentence. Ano po? And... Meron akong video about, what's that video? Punctuation marks. I discussed, that's almost complete, all the, all the punctuation marks that we can use when we are writing. Tinalakay ko dun. We have the, the so-called full stop punctuation marks. We have the, the opposite of it. Ano po? Ngayon, meron tayong tinatawag na comma splices sa English. <clears throat> What do we mean by splices, my dear learners? When we say splices, ito po kasi yung... Uh, when we say splice, it's a verb. Ano po? Yung sinasabi natin comma splices, sila yung parang may mali sa pagkakakombined ng mga clause dahil nga may kulang na comma, hindi nalagay yung tamang punctuation, or yung tamang adverb, conjunction, at other parts of speech para mas maging tama sila. Ano po? When we say splice, it means joint or pinagdugtong. Okay? Ngayon, tingnan natin tong pangungusap natin. Or let's take a look at this. Joining two independent clauses with only a comma creates a comma splice. Ayan. Siguro, you're familiar with different types of sentences. We have the so-called compound sentences. We have complex sentences, compound complex. And the favorite of all the learners, we have the simple sentences. <laughs> okay. Pero yung compound sentences kasi, we consider them as compound kasi we already have two Complete thoughts in a sentence. We have two clauses, two independent clauses. At kapag kinumbine sila, pwede tayong gumamit ng punctuation marks, ng tamang punctuation marks, o kaya naman ng mga conjunctions to combine them. Okay? Sabi dyan, joining two independent clauses with only a comma creates a comma splice. Ibig sabihin, may mali. No, comma splice ang tawag doon. Kapag yung dalawang independent clause, pinagdugtong mo lang sila gamit yung comma lang. So, anong pwede natin gawin? We can add periods, semicolons, semicolons, um, yun po yung parang may tuldok sa taas, sa baba, meron siyang kuwit or comma. Ganun po. No? Next, a comma. Pwede rin namang coordinating conjunction na malalaman nyo pa mamaya ano yung examples or a semicolon and a conjunctive adverb. Those different choices can help us fix a comma splice. Sa pamagitan ng mga binanggit ko na yun, maaayos natin yung comma splice. Ano yung example? I'll be giving you sentences with comma splice o may mali sa pagkakadugtong ng dalawang independent clauses na ginamitan lang ng comma. Paano natin siya itatama? Subukan ninyo, uh, try to choose from these, from periods, semicolons, comma, 
coordinating conjunctions, pwede rin semicolon, then followed by a conjunctive adverb para maayos tong sentences natin. The first sentence with an error, with a comma splice, is this. The politician gave his speech. The crowd cheered and applauded. The politician gave his speech. The crowd cheered and applauded. What's wrong with that? That we have two independent clauses there. We have the politician gave his speech. The other one is the crowd cheered and applauded. Pero ano mapapansin ninyo? Pinagdugtong lang sila. Well, in fact, dapat magkahiwalay kasi dalawang magka ibang sentence na pinagdugtong lang gamit yung comma. So that's a comma splice. How can we make that correct? Mm -hmm. Wow, I found a good answer from Rodale Pineda. Sabi niya, we can use period. Yeah, very good, excellent. We can use period here because dalawang magkaiba ng kaisipan eh. Pwede na nating putulin. Ano po, pwede natin putulin yung sentence. Aha, meron din ako nakita, sabi ni Mr. M. We can use semicolon. Tama rin yan. The politician gave his speech, semicolon, the crowd cheered and applauded. Good job. <laughs> I can find great answers from your comments. So it's the correct one. Sabi dyan, the politician gave his speech and the crowd cheered and applauded. Well, they are two independent clauses. So, paano natin sila i-fix? Pwede tayong gumamit ng period. Yun yung unang sagot kanina na tama. Ano? It can be, di ba yan yung mali? The politician gave his speech. The crowd cheered and applauded. It can be like this. The politician gave his speech. The crowd cheered and applauded. Uh -huh. <laughs> Next one is this. We can fix a comma splice using a semicolon. Pwede semicolon. Kanina may tamang sagot, no? Ganun yung binigay na example. It can be the politician gave his speech, comma, the crowd cheered and applauded, comma splice. To make it correct, let's use a semicolon. It will be the politician gave his speech, semicolon, the crowd cheered and applauded. That's it. Next one. I'll just drink water. Next one is this. We can also fix a comma splice using a comma. Pwede rin namang may comma. Pero, dudugtungan natin ng coordinating conjunction. Okay? So, it will be like this. The politician gave his speech, comma. We can use the coordinating conjunction and. And. The crowd cheered and applauded. That way, naging tama yung comma splice natin. Na iayos natin with the help of different ways na binanggit ko sa inyo. Ano pa ba yung ibang halimbawa ng coordinating conjunctions? Ito yung common. We can use and kapag magka-level lang yung pangungusap, yung two independent clauses. But kapag yung second clause natin ay kinokontradik niya, kinokontra niya yung unang independent clause. Or kapag may choices, na kapag may pagpipilian lang sa dalawang independent clause. Okay? At ano pa yung ibang halimbawa? We have the so-called fun boys. For and nor, but, ah, fun boys. For and nor, but, or, yet and so. So, yun po yung karaniwan. No? Yun yung tinatandaan sa skwelahan eh, para hindi natin malimutan we have fun boys. Okay. And lastly, we can fix a comma splice using a semicolon and a conjunctive adverb. Ayan. Ano po yung conjunctive adverb? Well, ito muna, papakita ko sa inyo. The common conjunctive adverbs are also, therefore, then, consequently, finally, furthermore, however, otherwise. Ang tawag sa kanila ay conjunctive adverbs, my dear learners. And there are plenty more. Marami pa pong iba. Assignment po ninyo yan. Let's make that comma splice correct with the use of a conjunctive adverb. Para po makapag-add ng conjunctive adverb, pag natapos yung unang independent clause, maglagay tayo ng semicolon. Semicolon. Conjunctive adverb, 
comma, then the second independent clause. It will be, the book was interesting. Hmm. Uh -oh, the book was interesting. Semicolon. However, the conclusion was very abrupt. That way, in that sense, naging tama, na itama natin yung comma splice. So, ayan na no, sana marami kayong natututuhan. Ayan, thank you so much sa mga kasama pa rin natin tonight. And siguro dito tayo hihinto sa third one, no? yung tinatawag nating word choice. Hanggang three common grammatical errors lang tayo. We have the word choice, my dear learners. Kapag sinabi nating word choice, uh, minsan, akala natin tama na yung salitang pinili natin. Hindi tayo aware na mali pala kasi yung napili natin, kahawig lang ng salitang yon o katunog lang, pero iba pala yung spelling. Ang sabi dyan, we have to avoid using words that we don't understand. Pwede naman kapag hindi natin alam, mag-check agad tayo sa dictionary para malaman natin. Using a word with the wrong meaning often due to similar spelling or pronunciation, which can occur when using spell check. Well, I have plenty of videos about commonly confused words, homonyms. Pwede ninyong i-check. Ang dami ko nang natalakay doon na naitama na rin natin. You may check them. Alright? And what else? We have to take note that if we don't know the meaning of a word, we can simply look it up on a dictionary. Sometimes words have different meanings depending on the context in which they are used. Minsan, pareho lang naman ang spelling, pero depende na sa pagkakagamit, naiiba na yung kahulugan. Ngayon, dito na tayo. Tingnan natin yung mga examples. We have here an example sentence which is wrong. An examination of the current literature will help distill the myth. Ah, sige ha, I will highlight na. Sasabihin ko na yung wrong word choice dyan. Ang ginamit dyan ay distill. Pero ang gustong ipakahulugan, nung sumulat ng pangungusap, na yung isinagawa raw na examination tungkol sa panitikan. Ano? Panitikan na napapanahon sa ngayon ay makakatulong para daw mawala na yung mga hindi naman dapat paniwalaan, yung mga myth. So, yung ginamit na term ay distill. Pero ang gusto niyong ipakahulugan para mawala yung myth. When we say distill, I know you're familiar kapag sinabi natin distill drinking water. Kasi kapag sinabing distill, it is the process of, di ba may tinatawag tayong distillation? It's the process of purifying water sa pamagitan ng paulit-ulit na pag-evaporate. Ano po? That's the process we call as distillation. Pero hindi yung gusto nating sabihin eh, na mali ng kahulugan yung pangungusap dahil sa word wrong, sa word, sa wrong word choice. So para maging tama, it will be like this. An examination of the current literature will help dispel the myth. Ang gusto pa lang sabihin, dispel, hindi distill. Medyo magkatunog lang sila. Pero... The fact na nakapag-commit siya ng word, wrong word choice, na iba yung pakahulugan sa pangungusap. So let's be cautious when we are choosing a word to describe a particular thing in our sentence. Okay? So we have to use the word dispel. I have here another one. Subukan ninyong hanapin ano yung mali. Ilagay ninyo sa ating live chat box. The recession had a negative effect on sales. Ah! Effect! Tama ba yung effect? <laughs> ano po ang dapat? Affect? I have a video about that. Affect? Yes, very good. From Hazel, it should be effect. Okay? When we say affect, that's wrong. We need to use the word instead of the recession had a negative effect on sales. It should be the recession had a negative effect on sales. Tumutukoy ka dun sa final product, sa kinahinatnan, sa naging bunga effect. Alright? Another one is this. What's wrong in this sentence? The purpose of their visit was political. The purpose of their visit was political. What's wrong in that sentence? Aha. Sige nga, ilagay ninyo. Ano yung dapat? 
the purpose of their visit. Well, sabihin ko na ha, ang mali dyan ay yung word na there. Yeah, very good! From Angelica Santos, it should be there. Yeah, I can see excellent answers from wonderful Mommy Debs. It must be there. Very good! Thank you! Nauunawaan ninyo, nakakasunod kayo. It will be the purpose of their visit was political. That's the correct answer. Another, cur another wrong one is this. The types of information are quite different. Quiet! Aha, meron akong video about quit, quiet, quiet. Panoorin ninyo para mas malinawang kayo anong pinagkaiba nila. Ito yung isang natutuwa ako kapag pinapakita ko sa estudyante ko. Anong basa dito? Yung word na quiet, binabasa pa rin nilang quiet. Well, they are totally different from each other. Quiet and quiet. The wrong word here is quiet. It should be an adverb. It should be an adverb. What's the correct adverb to replace quiet? Which sounds like quiet pa rin naman. Yeah, very good. The first one who got the correct answer is... Still, Hazel. Very good. Rodale Pineda. Quite good job. I can see correct answers coming. Thank you. Wonderfully quiet. Ayan. It's not, it's not quit, ha? That's a different word. So my assignment for you, Ronel, is to watch my video about quit, quiet, and quiet para mas makita mo ano ba yung pinagkaiba nila. <laughs> yeah, very good. The correct one is quiet. It's wrong to say that the types of information are quiet different. So you're telling na tahimik, silent yung different? No. It should be an adverb pertaining to how how much, gaano ka iba, quite different, medyo iba, quite. All right? That's it. It will be the correct form. The types of information are quite different. All right? So I think we will stop in that lesson. Kasi po meron pa sanang iba, pero mahaba-haba na. Yung next topic natin will be discussing about modifiers, dangling modifiers, misplaced modifiers, I'll give you a overview about the next ones. We have dangling modifiers, misplaced modifiers, possessive cases, and ba naglalagay ng apostrophe S or ng S lang or ng apostrophe. Uh, we'll also talk about pronouns, re pronoun reference, about punctuation. Very exciting yung mga susunod na parts ng ating common grammatical errors and how we can fix them. So next week, aabangan ko kayo for another live lesson. But wait, there is more. We will still have a short quiz. Titingnan ko kung uh, naunawaan ninyo yung mga naging pag-aaral natin. What you have to do is to choose the correct word to complete each sentence. Okay? What are we waiting for? Let's begin. The first one is this. The price of these genes is or are reasonable? What do you think is the correct answer? Put your answer in the chat box. Aha. Uh -huh. The price of these genes. What's our subject there? The subject, is it the genes or the price of the genes? Come on. Put your answer in the comment section. Let's find first our subject. What's our subject? Nako, nalilito agad kayo, ha? Anong pinag-uusapan natin? Yung genes o yung presyo lang ng genes? The price of the genes is or are reasonable? Alright. So, mm -hmm, may nagsabi, are because of genes? Who? Ayan, nalito na agad kayo. Ang pinag-uusapan lang natin dyan, from Mr. M, from Rodale, and from Hazel, ang pinag-uusapan lang natin dyan ay yung price. di ba? So, our subject, since the subject is price, what we have to use is also a verb that will agree with the singular subject price. Ang pinag-uusapan lang, ang presyo ng pantalon, hindi yung pantalon, hindi yung jeans. Ang pinag-uusapan natin yung presyo, no? Di ba? Yung reasonable daw, tama lang yung presyo. So, the correct answer is, is the price of these jeans is reasonable. The price is reasonable. We're not talking about the jeans. We're just talking about the price of the jeans. Yung presyo lang ng jeans. Okay? The second one is this. 
the only one of these most intelligent students who is or are under 18 is or are Peter. Aha, uh -huh. what's the answer there? We have two, ha? Dalawa yung sasagutin. <laughs> Hindi po dummy sub subject yon. Ang tawag doon ay para siyang prepositional phrase, no? Of the genes. Para, ibig sabihin ng prepositional phrase, kahit alising nyo sila, buo pa rin yung kahulugan ng sentence, eh. The price is reasonable. Na po? Tumutukulin tayo sa price. Okay, so the answer in this one, tingnan nga natin. O, oh, unawain natin para masagot natin ng tama, ha? The only one of these most intelligent students. Sino ang pinag-uusapan? Yung lahat ba ng matat pinakamatatalinong mag-aaral? O yung isa lang sa pinakamatatalinong mag-aaral? Hmm, nako ha? Ang pinag-uusapan lang natin, the only one, yung isa lang dun sa pinakamatatalinong mag-aaral, yung isa lang, hindi yung lahat ng matatalino. So, the only one, we have to use is, the only one of these most intelligent students is, okay, is under 18 blank, Peter. Sino raw yung tinutukoy na isa na yon? Si Peter. So, isa lang si Peter. Anong gagamitin? Is pa rin. <laughs> Patingin nga ng mga sagot ninyo. Kayo, ha? Nalilito kayo, ha? Ayan. Is. Is. Only one nga. Kapag nakakita kayo ng mga sentences na one of the students, one of the learners, hindi ka tumutukoy dun sa now, na nasa prepositional phrase na of the learners, of the students, tumutukoy ka lang dun sa isa. Kapag nakakita kayo ng ganyong sentence, ano? That's singular. So, the correct one will be the only one of these most intelligent students who is under 18 is Peter. Okay? Another one is this. Eto ha, gagamit tayo rito ng pronoun antecedent agreement. All Students collected. Ayan na kanina, kung nakinig kayo, masasagot nyo agad to. His or their library card. Library card. <laughs> hindi ko kinugulo utak ninyo. Ganun kasi sa English kailangan hahanapin ninyo talaga para hindi kayo malito. Ano po? Well, yes, very good. The correct answer there should be there from Rodale, Kathleen, from Yen, from Anne Mabel. Okay, so it will be all students collected their library card. Okay, all students collected their library card. All right. The next one is this. Ito na yung last, ha? Ito na yung last. Everyone pays taxes. It's a comma splice. Comma splice po ito. Paano siya gagawing tama? Mamili kayo dito sa ating conjunction kung end ba or but. Everyone pays taxes. Ang bawat isa ay nagbabayad ng buwis. Kama. Followed by a conjunction. Is it end or but? Everyone doesn't like to pay taxes. Ang bawat isa ay nagbabayad. Hmm. Ang bawat isa rin ay hindi naman nila gustong magbayad ng buwis. <laughs> What's the answer? Well, Kung unawain, ayan, paulit-ulit, but, 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 but. Well, the answer is but. Very good. I can see excellent answers from our live students tonight. It will be everyone pays taxes, comma, but everyone doesn't like to pay taxes. That's it. So, ilagay nyo ngayon mga score ninyo. Nakailang kayong tamang sagot. Ilagay sa ating live chat box. Yeah, very good. I can see the correct reasoning here, but because it negates the previous clause. Ayun nga, no? Kapag kukontrahin niya yung naunang independent clause, we have to use but. Alright? That's it. Ayan. So, thank you so much, my dear learners. Ilagay pa ninyo yung mga pagbati ninyo sa ating live chat box para mabati ko pa po kayo. Para ating mai- Flash ang inyong mga pangalan.
Thank you so much po sa inyong lahat. No? Nakakatuwa ang dami nating uh, live audience. Ang assignment ko sa inyo ay ito. Next week, ito yung gagawin ninyo. Isisend nyo yung link sa isa pa ninyong kaibigan para madoble tayo. No? Para mas maraming matuto sa kaklase ninyo. Very useful kasi ito. Eh. Tatalakayin natin yung seven other uh, common grammatical errors. Pero I think tatlo lang din or apat yung matatalakay natin. Kasi mas crucial, mas mabusisi yung mga susunod nating topics. So if you, my dear learners, find this live lesson tonight useful, educational, and of course informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Yes, paki-like po ng video na ito and uh, click the subscribe button kung hindi pa kayo member ng ating community of learners and don't forget to also click the notification bell para lagi kayong updated. Every time meron tayong live lesson, meron tayong uh, newly loaded na video. So thank you so much sa mga very active learners natin si Hazel. Ayan, shout out natin ng It's Shana Villafuerte, Badaguas, Bongala, and the Jesus family. Shout out po sa inyong lahat. Thank you rin, Faith Manalo, for being very active tonight. Shout out din natin si Ronel Espanyola, na nanonood from Sindangan, Zamboanga del Norte. At ang FB page natin, maya-maya, if a flash ko ha, mag-follow kayo sa other social media accounts ni Teacher Aubrey para lagi kayong updated. Next week, makita-kita po tayo ng 8.30pm pa rin. Same date. Uh, same day, Thursday, every Thursday I will go live or ahead of time kung may mangyari man, hindi matuloy, I'll inform you. But I promise weekly we will be having live lessons like this. Hello, Kathleen. Thank you sa'yo at sa lahat. Eileen, thank you. Uh-huh, that's nice. Thank you din kay Rodale sa lahat ng mga active. Ani yung sa'yo may nanonood from Korean or Magalido. Thank you. Shout out din natin si special shout out din natin si Anne Mabel de Jesus. Gusto raw ng special shout out. Siyempre may nanonood din from Saudi Arabia. Shout out natin si RG Torres. Pasensya na, hindi ko, kung hindi ko man ma-shout out lahat. From Hong Kong, si Dang Skirakel. Anton Mon, hello din naman sa'yo. I'm Teacher Aubrey, ha? Na Teacher Audrey. <laughs> Alright. Ayan. And sa lahat, shout out po to all of you. Special shout out sa lahat. Ayan, RG Torres, hope you have content about IELTS working task. Sige, kung gusto nyo ng ganyan, meron akong i-invite. Pwede kaming mag-collab na siya yung mas are reliable to discuss about IELTS. Meron na akong previous live about IELTS with Teacher Janet. Pwede uli natin siyang i-invite para mas magkaroon pa kayo kaalaman tungkol sa IELTS exam. Meron din tayong kasama from Tabaco City sa Albay. Shout out din natin si Wonderful Mommy Debs. And to everyone, thank you so much po uh, sa mga susunod nating live. Inaasahan ko na mas madodoble yung bilang natin para mas maraming matuto. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And also, I would like to invite all of you to uh, support me on my second YouTube channel in which I do vlogs together with my family. It is Aubrey and Family Lifestyle TV. I-search nyo po yan. Makikita nyo, ninyo sa aking channel din. Nandun yung sa second channel. Support nyo rin po yung kapatid ko. She's a future English teacher, Miles Bermudez. She will teach you... Uh, study tips as well as other English lessons on her channel. The name of her channel is I am Miles Bermudez. Please support her para mag-grow din po yung channel niya. Don't forget then na mag-follow kayo sa aking Instagram, personal Instagram ko, Obrey. Yung Instagram natin na sisimulan pa lang natin i-build up for learning English community is at aubrey.bermudez. You will also follow me on TikTok for more shorter shorter videos na gusto ninyong mapanood. It is at Aubrey Bermudez. And of course, i-like and i-follow nyo rin ang ating Facebook page na nagsisimula ng mag-grow. Recently, nag-100,000 followers tayo. It is Learn English with Teacher Aubrey or the username of that Facebook page is at Aubrey at Bermudez Aubrey. Okay? So, ayan na nga. Huwag kalimutan na mag-follow sa ating other social media accounts. At syempre, dito sa ating YouTube channel, mag-like, i-like itong video, panoorin ang mga previous videos natin para mas matuto. I-share ito para mapanood ng hindi pa naka-watch nitong live natin. Mag-comment po kayo sa ating comment section kung hindi na kayo nakanood ng live. At syempre, mag-subscribe para maging bahagi ng ating 
YouTube Online Community of Learners and click the notification bell para lagi po kayong updated every time I will upload new video. And syempre po, para rin mapakita ninyo yung support ninyo sa ating channel, you may send super thanks. You may send super chat, super thanks to show support on my contents. Ano po? And before I end this live video, my dear learners, gusto kong muling ipaalala sa inyo na ano man ang inyong mga edad, estado sa buhay, o narating sa buhay, alam ko naman lahat tayo mayroong mga pangarap. Basta po, walang imposible. Ano lang kailangan gawin? Lagi lang pagsisikapan at pagsasanayan. Thank you so much for making this live lesson tonight very, very fruitful and worthwhile. God bless you all and see you on my next live lesson. Bye!